Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 32. In this tutorial we're going to be focusing on this brand new NPC that we have here uh, and we'll be getting them to basically stop and talk to us when we say talk or whatever. Don't forget, click on subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else I upload on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So this is actually a lot simpler than what uh, you think. Reason being is because we've already dealt with an NPC chat system and we can take the one we've already dealt with, duplicate it and modify it to fit this NPC and every other walking NPC. So to do that, we're going to take this NPC chat script, hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm actually going to rename the script rather than keep it as NPC chat one. And this one is, well, okay, so basically we're going to go with this and we're going to have like a multiple choice system. So let's have this as NPC choice. So preparing for the future. Let's open that up in Visual Studio. And while Visual Studio takes ages and ages and ages to open, uh, I'll quickly describe what we're going to do with it. So this script contains a couple of variables that we don't need. So we're going to cut them out. And um, we basically need to add in uh, some more uh, to the script because we need to be able to show an idle animation. We need the uh, player to, the, sorry, the NPC to turn and look at us and display whatever text they're going to say. So uh, when it's loaded, we're just going to go through, uh, probably not line by line because we already know which lines we're going to need and which ones we don't. So we're just going to go through and take away the lines we don't need. I'll also explain why we don't need some of these lines and why we do need to add in a couple of other lines. So uh, Visual Studio has pretty much loaded up now. I swear it gets slower and slower. So let's go down some of these variables. We need most of them. The ones we don't need are these last four because we don't need the uh, main blocker because that is the blockage to... Let's get rid of that yellow bar. That is the blockage to where the skeleton is. And we don't need that text either. We also don't need anything to do with the skeleton and we don't need anything to do with the exit trigger. They can disappear. Now you'll notice quite a few red lines everywhere. That's because we need to rename the class at the top to match the script name. In this case, NPC choice. So as we go down, we can see that we have the standard distance from us, which is fine. On mouse over, that is exactly what we need because we want it to say talk. And if we do press the action button, so when we do talk to them, we need to say uh, if the dialog state dot state take acts is false, we don't really need uh, a lot of this because this was all to do with the fact of, oh, well, you know, we need to get an axe or we need to destroy the skeleton. So we don't really need a lot of this here. So the script's going to be smaller. So we are going to go with uh, this one at the bottom. So let's get rid of, I guess you can go with any of them actually. So let's get rid of that if statement. Let's get rid of that if statement. And then on this one, let's just get rid of the if and the close curly bracket. And let's just neaten this up a little. So let's change what the text actually says. So we're going to say, Text box, hey, thank you for your help. Here's the kid, get out of the village. Let's uh, change this to uh, hello there. How can I help you? So this is going to be the intro to when we go through the multiple choice system and do whatever else we need to. Um, so what else do we need to do here? So when we talk to them, uh, do we need to... Let's... We, just uh, annotate that out for now. Uh, that can dis that can disappear. That can disappear. That can that's fine. So basically, what we're saying is, when we talk to them, we get rid of the usual UI and put on the normal UI, which is the subtitle box. Obviously, we can get rid of these because they're no, re no longer relevant to this script. So they can go. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because we're going to have to start the co-routine. Uh, of reset chat. In other words, this will basically say uh, reset the chat, 
uh, set everything back on and we're good to go. So realistically, we don't even need this get components box collider down here. So I don't think we need this either. So I'm actually going to get rid of that and get rid of that. And I'm going to save that script. So all we've done at this point is take an existing script and take away things that we don't actually need from it. All we really do need is talking to the person, actually talking to them, and then resetting the chat as well as looking away from the person. So if we head back to Unity, let that script compile. It'll take just a second. Shouldn't have any errors. This one should disappear once it has compiled. There we go. So what we need to do is attach that script to this NPC, which is NPC002. So let's attach that onto there. And then we just need to attach those game objects. So action display is in the canvas, which is action display, action text, extra cursor, uh, subtext, which is that one, and subtitle text box. Now, it, it's amazing how quickly we've written this script because we've already written it before. So we don't really need to worry about too much more of it because the script already exists. All the cursor stuff, all the um, ray casting, all done. So we don't need to worry about ever writing it again. We can just use scripts uh, we've previously written and modify them. So I'm just going to move the NPC controller a bit closer to our character so we can actually interact with them a little better. And this is the first stage of this tutorial complete. So we're just going to make sure that we can indeed talk to our walking NPC. Yep, that's fine. Hello there. How can I help you? That's all good. So I did notice there, I think we might be better off actually still having that in there. Reason being is because the text may still display. So there's our first bug fixed. Easy. So let's set that as true. Now, that did work. Carried on walking. So the next thing to do is to basically add in an idle animation that we're going to be able to play. So to do that, let's go to uh, back to Unity. Let that compile. And... Time today, here we go. So uh, let's go to our NPC folder, which is right there. And the idle animation, I uh, did I extract it? I think I may have extracted it during testing, but either way, uh, if you haven't done, go to your idle animation, hold control, press D to extract it out of there. Let's take that animation, so idle, loop, which is fine. And then we just need to add that to the animator for NPC2. So click on NPC2, click on the animator. And if we haven't already, I, I can't just remember if we did this in a previous tutorial. It's been quite a while since I've recorded this series. Uh, but if not, drag and drop into there and make sure we have idle in there. So we have walking by default and idle as a secondary animation. So now as we've got that animation in there, we also need to reference the two scripts right here. Uh, sorry, the one script and the nav mesh right here. So we need to disable these two when we talk to our NPC. So let's add that in now. That means at the top, we need to add in using unity engine.ai because we're referencing the nav mesh. So that means when we actually speak to our person, which is right here, first and foremost, what we need to do let me just align all this back up. That's all right. I should have done it before, but never mind. So first thing we need to do is we need to say to um, basically play the idle animation. So let's set... Um, have I done this right? I'm just trying to think now. Is this the best way of doing it? Yeah, of course it is. So we're going to say this dot get component, spiky brackets, animator, Open close bracket dot play and the animation is idle semicolon at the same time we then need to disable these two components so one is npc ai nav 
and the other is nav mesh agent. So let's start with this dot get component dot nav mesh agent open oh, close bracket dot enabled equals false because we're turning it off and the same applies to the script as well so this dot get component spiky brackets npcai nav there it is open oh, close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and let's save that for now and let's quickly test those lines of code so that is the next phase of this tutorial in order. There we go. Stopped. Perfect. So far, so good. So now we need to resume what they're doing. And hopefully you guys may have already figured out how we're going to do that. So these three lines of code that we've just written, let's copy them and place them in the reset chat section down here. And we're going to change idle to walking. And we're going to put the nav mesh agent as true. And the script npc ai nav as true as well. And save. So you can really see the sequence of events coming together now and being able to see all of this come as, you know, oh, the whole sequence. So they stop, talk to us, and then carry on. And hopefully this should work. So over to our NPC, talk, how can I help you? And off they go again. Perfect. So it's kind of rude not looking at someone when you're talking to them. So let's add in the ability for the NPC to look at us and then carry on walking as normal when they're done. It's really, really easy to do. Now, the whole, the idea of being able to do this is a little bit crazy. So I'll show you how um you would normally do something like this and then i'll explain why it does what it does so in this bit just before we play the idle animation let's say uh in fact we need to add in the player don't we so let's add the player as a variable public game object the player because we want them to look at the player but the script needs to know what the player is so uh not this it's going to be uh yeah this this dot transform dot look at and in brackets the player dot transform semicolon and save now you would think that that would work as intended no problems whatsoever but let me show you what happens when you try it It actually helps if you add the player. Of course, of course it does. <laughs> uh, that wasn't what I wanted to show you guys. I, uh, I apologize for that. This is what I wanted to show you. So let's try talking to our NPC now. Oh, and they've just done a Michael Jackson. Ah, just like a backwards Michael Jackson. Now, that is a little bit crazy, but there is a real simple easy to fix so it doesn't quite work as intended even though the line of code is theoretically right it's not quite right we need to make sure that the transform position for the y-axis remains the same and doesn't try and look at the player so in order to do that we need to get rid of the player dot transform and replace it with a new vector three so we're giving it 3D coordinates here based on X, Y, and Z. The X and the Z are going to be based on the player, and the Y is going to be based on the NPC. That way, it prevents it from looking up at like 45 degrees. So that's going to be the player dot transform dot position dot X. So that's the X coordinate sorted. The next one is going to be the Y. So it's going to be this dot transform dot position dot y semicolon and then the z again is going to be back to the player so the player dot transform dot position dot z close bracket semicolon and save 
and that should be two brackets there. My apologies, because we've got the uh, two, two there. Yeah, that's fine. So what's basically happening here is we're giving it a 3D coordinate rather than solely based on the player. Like I said, it's based two thirds on the player. That way it prevents the NPC from doing what it does. So now we should be able to go to our NPC and talk. And then they'll carry on. So there is a lot more intricacy that you could go into to get this working perfectly. And I would encourage you to do so. Uh, these are the basic, well, I say the basics. We're getting away from beginner basic things now. Uh, these are ways of doing it. And I always encourage you to advance what you've learned here to create your own. So next tutorial, what we're going to get into is conversations and multiple choice. So we know these text boxes end after two and a half seconds. We're going to stop that from happening on this NPC. And we're actually going to make a talkable conversation. Um, obviously, we won't be able to move and all that. So we're going to go from there and we're going to make it really cool and what options we can have. So, guys, until that next tutorial, uh, I'll also leave that script uh, the NPC choice one on the website as well. If you want, if you've got any problems, head over there, uh, download some assets, and I'll leave it there for you to download. Till next tutorial, guys. Thank you very much for watching.